Well, good morning, church family. Welcome you to worship today. This is a great day to be in the Lord's house. Amen. Amen. It's great because you're here and because you've come to worship the Lord and he is here as well. And so welcome to you as uh, welcome to those who are joining us online as well. We're really grateful that uh, we get to connect this way. And I'm so glad that you could join us this morning. As we get ready for worship, would you please sign our friendship registers? You'll find those at the ends of the rows and pass them on around if you would. Placed for you to mark if you want to change your email address or sign up for a church newsletter or any of that kind of stuff or serve or if you have a need. So please uh, let others um, have access to that as well. Um, also want to um, invite you to take a look at our prayer list on the third page of your bulletin. There are lots of needs there. So Please do continue your ministries of prayer, and thank you for that. Please be praying for our friend Mel. He's not on the list here, but he went into the hospital this week, and uh, he's doing okay. I saw him yesterday evening, and he's looking good, and he is uh, ready to be done with hospitals, but he's going to be fine. He's uh, uh, going to have a heart procedure this week, and then he'll get to come home. And so just lift him and Joyce up in your prayers. We're still praying for our friend Mark and continue to lift him up. He is getting stronger, and so um, just continued blessings and prayers for him. Pray for our friend Ruby, who is struggling um, terribly with her breathing. She's making progress, we hope, but uh, just lift her up. We love you, Ruby, and uh, we're sure praying for you. Uh, we're praying for Dolores, who is uh, Carolyn's mom, and uh, she was in the hospital. Now she's home, and we're praying for strength and healing for her. And of course, we're continuing to pray for Milt and, and uh, for Jeannie and for Carolyn, for all of our people. Um, pray also for those who are sad, if you would. There are lots of folks who are hurting. And we added yet another family to that listing. Um, Becky and Christy and Mike's grandma, that would be Evelyn Schwinn, she passed away. And so we're so sorry that she was so loved and, and loved by so many folks. So uh, lift that family up in your prayers, if you would. Uh, services are planned for Thursday at 11 at Lines Funeral Home in Leavenworth. Um, visitation Wednesday from 6 to 8. And so uh, we'll continue praying for them. Continue praying, of course, for Sherry's uh, family and friends. Services for Sherry were here on Friday, and we had a, a wonderful celebration of life because she was such a wonderful, beloved person. And then on Tuesday of this past week, we had services for Peggy Rule. That's Roger and Maxine's daughter. And so uh, she also was an amazing, sweet lady. And so pray for for that family as well. Of course, we're still praying for the gardeners and the Havercamps and the Reeds and all of our people. Uh, we're praying for our nation and our leaders, for the war in Israel and Middle East and Haiti, for our servicemen and women, for preparations as we be, get ready for vacation Bible school and camp and all those great opportunities. Lots of uh, needs, but we have a God who is mighty. We have a God who can heal the broken, who 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 comforts the brokenhearted. And so we call out to him and know that he hears those prayers. So thank you for that. Let's get ready now for worship as Cheryl comes. It's going to be a good day. Would you agree with me? Yes. It's going to be great. And we're so grateful we get together today. Cheryl's going to come and lead us. And then let's get our hearts ready and worship the Lord. Welcome. Well, good morning. As Pastor Scott said, we had some um, services to celebrate uh, three sweet ladies this past week, all of which will be very, very missed. At Sherry Leftwich's service, we read a passage that was so fitting to her life, but also to Peggy and Lana. They were, are also words of encouragement for each of us this morning. So as we begin our time of worship, I thought we would look at Ephesians chapter 2. As we read this passage together, let us be reminded of God's love and care for each of us individually. Ephesians chapter 2, <clears throat> verse 10. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. It's not a very long passage, but it sure says a lot. These words of scripture remind us that God didn't just create us in a bunch and then dump us out on this earth. No, he created us as a masterpiece. He created us as his workmanship, an individual work of art. Like an artist creates a masterpiece, 
focusing on the details and how it will come together perfectly. God created us in that way. Each of us uniquely different with different quirks, but on purpose and planned by the God who breathed life into us and who loves us still. However, God didn't just create us to sit around and look nice. We are no painting to be hung on the wall and simply looked at. He created us to do good works. We are called to make things better, to bring good to those around us, to live the example that Christ set for us. Because it is through Jesus Christ that we are able to fulfill the good works God has planned for us. So what does that mean for us today? What good works are we called to do? Jesus answered that question for us when he was asked about the most important commandments. So we're going to look at Matthew also this morning, Matthew 22, verse 35. One of them, an expert of the law, tested Jesus with this question, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. This morning, let us declare our love for our God. We can worship our amazing God inwardly in all circumstances, at all times, in all places. But right now... We get to worship him outwardly in the presence of other believers publicly, giving him the glory that he deserves in this place, and that is good work. And as we worship and hear the message from God's word and through the hymns, we are filled up, encouraged, strengthened, and that gives us the power to fulfill the next part of God's command, to love others. Because let's be honest, we need help. It is sometimes hard to love others. We need to be filled, and then we can follow the example of Jesus and go out and do good works for our neighbors. Whether you're here in person in this room or online, you have a neighbor, and you are called to love them. It may be the person sitting right beside you or someone across the street or someone at the end of a phone. We get to go out and love others because we are created as God's masterpiece. We get to do good works in unique ways because we are uniquely made by the one true God who loves his creation. So let us begin by loving God in worship this morning and opening our hearts to hear his message so that we can go out and do good works. But first, let us begin with prayer. As the kids come forward to light the candles, we have the chance to uniquely as uniquely and created creations to go to our creator in prayer. Let us give thanks for the gifts that we have been given and the way that we have been created to use those works, those gifts to do good works. Let us admit that we are sinners who are in need of the saving of Jesus Christ. Let us accept his forgiveness. He died on that cross for us, so let us willingly accept the forgiveness that he gives us. And then let us ask him to open our hearts to hear his message and to be changed, to be renewed, to be fulfilled this morning as we choose to worship together. Good morning. Let's all stand, if you will, please, and turn your hymnals to Christ the Lord is Risen Today, number 217.
Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Alleluia. Sing ye heavens and earth reply. we pray. Heavenly Father, we are so blessed today to be in this place, blessed to be your children, blessed to be redeemed, blessed to have hope and courage and strength because of what Christ Jesus has done for us, the blessed hope of uh, victory, a blessed hope of a better place. Uh, prepared for us, the place you have prepared, O oh God, for all who believe in Jesus and are redeemed, washed in the blood of the Lamb, whose sins have been more than covered, have been washed away, completely gone, eradicated, erased, no longer exist. What a change that brings to a person's heart and mind to know that we are accepted because of Jesus. What a powerful, powerful thing that Jesus has done. No one else could do it. No one else could accomplish what your Son, our Lord and Savior, has accomplished for us. Jesus set us free. We live in this world as free people, instruments of righteousness, witnesses to the truth. We're filled with courage and strength because we know in our hearts we're right because we follow you, O oh God, and believe the truth that you have revealed to us by your Holy Spirit who does not lie, who does not exaggerate, who does not tell us something that uh, is wrong. Your spirit, O oh God, leads and guides us into all truth. That gives us confidence and courage. We're fully equipped for every good work. We ask, dear Father, that you would uh, be in this place this morning, that your presence would, would fill this place, that we can understand uh, more completely just what we have and go out in the world with the strength, the courage, the confidence that, that, uh, that you deserve, that your word deserves. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you take your 
bulletin. Now please and turn on the third page. Let's sing Shine Jesus Shine. The light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory blaze, Spirit blaze, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Lord, I come to your awesome presence from the shadows into your radiance by thy blood i may enter your brightness search me try me consume all my darkness shine on me shine on me shine jesus shine fill this land with the father's glory blaze spirit blaze Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Mirrored here, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me, shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Amen. Let's all greet one another now. As we find our places, let me invite the kids to come forward for the children's time. Well, good morning. Let me try that again. Good morning. Good morning. There you go. I am so glad that you are here, and I am so glad that we get to be church family together. And I am just realizing that I forgot my thing I was going to show you today which was some glasses. Why would I have some glasses to show you for today? Can you think about it? They're cardboard glasses with dark lenses in them. Do you know why I might have those? Is there anything happening tomorrow? Yes, ma'am. 
there is a solar eclipse tomorrow. Do you know what that means? Yes, what does that mean? Yes, so tomorrow the sun is going to be up in the sky like always, and then the moon is going to move across the path of the sun, and it's going to block the sun from shining for just a very short time, and it's going to be cool. Is anybody planning to look at that? It's going to be pretty amazing. I think it's going to be really fun. It's, is it something we need to be scared of? No, it's very cool, though. It's not something you need to be scared of. It's also not something you want to just walk right outside and look at the sun because that will hurt your eyes, right? So you have to have some special glasses to be able to see that, okay? Well, I think tomorrow you're going to see that it won't be totally dark, but it will be darker than normal. And if you see a part of the sun, like a little sliver of the sun, then that might hurt your eyes. And so you want to be very safe. Like if you're going to go out and look at it, talk to mom, dad, um, your teacher, and they will give you complete instructions how to do it safely, okay? But it's going to be very, very cool. I was thinking about all of that, and some people were saying, well, it's really kind of a lucky break that we get to see a solar eclipse. Do you think it's a lucky thing that we get to see the solar eclipse? Yeah. I think we're blessed to be able to see it, but you know what? They've been talking about this solar eclipse for years. They knew it was coming before tomorrow arrived. And the next solar eclipse, I think I read the next one that we'll get to see really well is like... Uh, I think you guys will be like college age the next time it comes around. You'll like seven years. Well, it's sort of like that. It's kind of complicated because it has to do with the way that the sun moves and the moon moves and all that kind of stuff. But I did learn this this week. The sun is 400 times bigger than the earth, right? And the sun is 400 times farther away than the moon is. And so the fact that that's 400 times bigger and 400 times further away means that when the moon comes across the pathway, it is totally, perfectly covering the sun. Now, do you think that was just lucky that that happened? That the sun just happened to be that far away and that the moon just happened to be that size? I think it was on purpose. I think that God made it that way on purpose. I'm not exactly sure why, but I think maybe just to give us a really cool thing to help us to understand that God made this stuff, right? Um, that God did that. So tomorrow, when you're watching the eclipse, I want you to understand that that's not just a lucky break, that God did that, right? It's predictable. We've known this was going to happen. We can tell you when the next one's going to happen. All of that makes me think that God is really, really big, right? It's just not just lucky. It's not just chance that all this happened. God did this on purpose, and that is really, really cool. So the verse I wanted to share with you is from Job. And Job was a guy, you know his story. He had some really hard times and some difficult things that he had to encounter. And in one of the talks that God had with Job, God said, who do you think made all this stuff that you see, right? Who was it who said, this is how far the ocean goes and no further, right? Who was it who made the stars and the moon and all the beautiful things on the earth? And what do you think Job said? Yes, ma'am. It was you, God. You made all that stuff. And because you made all that stuff, then we don't have to be scared because we know that God is going to take care of us. He made the sun, he made the moon, he made the stars, he made everything in the world, so we don't ever have to be afraid. Here's another one. Um, Job is talking here, and he says, um, God is the maker of the bear and the stars. That's the stars up in the sky. He's the maker of the constellations. He performs wonders that cannot be understood, miracles that cannot be counted, when he passes me, I can't see him. When he goes by, I can't understand him. Um, but he is there, right? So what I want you to understand is tomorrow, everybody's going to be saying, oh, look, it's an eclipse, and oh, that's really neat. But what I want you to think is God is really big because he made all of this stuff, and he made it so that we could know it was going to happen and that we could know that God was in it, right? Can you remember all that? All right. 
Let's pray. Father, thank you that you are such an amazing God, mighty and powerful and incredible, and that you made the sun and the moon and the stars, and that you made us and that you made little flowers, and you made all of that so that we could know that you're God. Help us to be amazed tomorrow and be reminded of your really, really big love for us. Bless these sweet kids in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. I think some of you guys are singing, so if you're a Sunday school kid and you know that you're supposed to sing today, you can just stay right there, and if you don't know anything about singing, then you can go and be seated, okay? Thank you. That was great. Um, turn now, if you will, to 415, He Giveth More Grace. <clears throat> Our 
strength has failed ere the day is half done when we reach the end of our hoarded resources our father's forgiving is only begun his love has no limit his grace has no measure his power has no boundary known unto men or out of his infinite riches in jesus he giveth and giveth and giveth again amen and i turn back to there shall be <clears throat> excuse me there shall be showers of blessing number 289 <clears throat> there shall be showers of blessing this is the promise of love there shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above showers of blessing showers of blessing we need Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing, come and now honor your word. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, oh that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing, now as on Jesus we call. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead.
Thank you to our kids for that special music. That was lovely. And thank you, Beverly, for the offertory. Also very lovely. I want to invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to the Gospel of John, chapter 21. John, chapter 21 is our text for today. While you're turning there, I want to tell you a little story about uh, three turtles that decided they were going to go on a picnic. One of the turtles packed the sandwiches. One of the turtles packed the drinks. The third turtle just came along for the ride. He just was there to enjoy their company. They headed off into the woods. Halfway to their destination, it started to rain. And so uh, the turtles took shelter under a big old rock, and they started talking through what they were going to do. The first two turtles, they turned to the third turtle, and they said, Look, we brought the drinks. We brought the sandwiches. You brought nothing. So we think that you should go back home and get the umbrellas and bring them back here. And then when we have the umbrellas, then we can get the drinks and the sandwiches, and we'll go on about our way into the woods, and we'll have our picnic. The third turtle said, you have to be kidding. I know you two, he says, and I know that as soon as I leave, you're going to eat the sandwiches, and you're going to drink the drinks, and leave me with nothing. The turtles, the other two, said, we would never do that. We are your friends. We promise you we will not eat the drinks or eat the sandwiches or drink the drinks. We'll wait for you to come back with the umbrellas. So they talk it through and talk it through. Finally, the third turtle agrees, okay, but you better not drink the drinks and you better not eat the sandwiches until I get back. So the third turtle, he leaves. Minutes go by. And then minutes turn into hours, and then hours turn into days. On the 10th day, the two turtles that are there waiting, finally one turns to the other and he says, okay, why don't we just eat the sandwiches? Why don't we just drink the drinks? That guy is not coming back. Um, And as soon as he said that, why don't we just eat the sandwiches? As soon as he said that, they heard a voice from the other side of the rock. It was the third turtle. He says, if you do, I'm not going to go get the umbrellas. We're going to think about being paralyzed by indecision today. John chapter 21 and verse 14 is our text. Afterwards, this is after the resurrection. Jesus has appeared to the ladies at the tomb. He has appeared to his disciples. And um, now sometime afterwards, he appears again. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathanael from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, the two other disciples, they were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and they got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood up on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Verse 7, then the disciples The disciple whom Jesus loved, that would be John, he said to Peter, it is the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, Peter wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off and he jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. And Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. And this was now the third time that Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. And I pray that you would help us to hear your voice today. Help us to have open ears and open hearts this morning and let the Holy Spirit do a mighty work here in our midst. Please speak Through me, as your messenger, I'm asking that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart might be 
holy and pleasing and acceptable in your sight. God, you're my rock and our redeemer. Please bless us as we gather around your table. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. So in John chapter 21, the disciples have gone back to work. Remember, Jesus died. Uh, He gave his life on the cross And they felt so alone and they felt so disappointed in themselves. And Peter especially had failed Jesus three different times. They said, don't you belong to him? Aren't you one of his disciples? Aren't you one of his? I think I saw you with him. And three times Peter, remember, said, no, I'm not one of them. No, I don't know anything about Jesus. No, I'm not one of his followers. But thankfully, that was not the end of the story. Jesus rose again. In the greatest moment in all of history, the greatest miracle ever, Jesus rose from the dead. We celebrated that last week, and we continue to celebrate that today because every day is Easter. He appeared then, blessing the disciples. He appeared and showed Thomas the wounds in his hand and his feet and said, now you can believe. He appeared to the ladies. He appeared behind locked doors. He, he showed up for the disciples The lesson that we can learn from that is try as hard as you want to contain Jesus. He's going to prevail. You can try to silence him. You can try to quiet him down. He's going to prevail and his kingdom will prevail. So the disciples understand all of this, but what do they do now? Peter, he says, well, I think I'll go fishing. And the other guys say, well, that sounds like a grand idea. We'll go too. Some have speculated about what's going on here, what's really happening. What are the disciples doing in this critical moment in history going fishing? And I think it's pretty simple. They're returning to what they know. Remember, they were fishermen before Jesus walked up to them and said, come on and follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. So they're just going back to what they know, what they're comfortable with, the only thing that they know to do. Are they turning back in this moment, do you think? I don't know. I do know this. It was a bad day for fishing. They, they got skunked. Caleb doesn't ever have a bad day fishing like this, but they absolutely got skunked. And then this stranger appears on the bank and he says to them, why don't you cast your net on the other side of the boat, which didn't ever really make much sense to me. It seems like you're out in the water. This side is not that much different from that side. But the stranger says, cast your net on the other side of the boat. And so they did and they received more than they could handle. The, the catch was so tremendous, having been skunked over here, now the, the nets was, were being overwhelmed. And then John realized, it's Jesus. It's the Lord, he says. Jesus, the resurrected Messiah, has busted into their world once again. He's broken into their world to remind them that he was not done. He's broken into their world to remind them that he is still with them, to remind them that in spite of their failures, Peter, I'm talking about you, the other guys as well, in spite of their failures, he still loved them. He's broken into their world to remind them that they've still got some work to do. So, I love this passage. They had breakfast. Imagine just how cool that meal must have been uh, sitting around a campfire with Jesus eating breakfast. Unbelievable, incredible moment. Jesus, the risen Jesus, but bursts into our world too. He shows up. Sometimes on days that are not so good, he busts in to remind us that he's alive in our world today. Sometimes he breaks in to remind us that he is still with us, to remind us that in spite of our failures, talking about me, some of us as well, in spite of our failures, he still loves us. He breaks into our world to remind us that there is still work to be done. Jesus bursts into your world too. So Peter, when he realized that it was Jesus busted in, did something very Peter-like in my opinion. He got dressed and then he jumped into the water. He left a perfectly good boat once again and swam to shore in order to see 
Jesus. He had failed Jesus earlier, hadn't he? He denied even knowing him, but not anymore. Now Peter is absolutely 100% all in. Peter is all completely immersed in following Jesus, the resurrected Jesus. He calls us, I think, to jump in all in for him still today. Yet our temptation is to turn back. Our temptation is to go back to what we know the best, to be much more like the world and much more in the world and much less all in for Jesus. So my invitation for you today is could you see that the risen Christ is here? Just as he showed up for those guys and had breakfast with them, could you see that he shows up for us today? That he has shown up for us today? That he is here with us? Could you understand that he is longing to burst into your world even this morning? But he's not going to do that unless you allow him. He's not going to show up for you in ways that you'll understand and see unless you open your eyes and see that he wants to have a relationship with you. He loves you. He loves you so much that he died for you on the cross and that he rose again for you that you could have life everlasting. This morning, could you open your eyes and see the risen Christ before you? Could you today get out of the boat and follow him? Father, I pray that you would help us as we gather here to see your hand at work, to be reminded of the fact that even though we fail you, you still love us, Can, to be reminded of the fact that even though we are not perfect, you still have a purpose for us. I pray, Father, that you would help us not to just be paralyzed by indecisiveness, but instead help us to be amazed by your presence with us, by your call upon our lives, and help us to stand up and to answer. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Before we gather around the Lord's table, we want to have an opportunity for you to respond to this moment. As Jesus calls his disciples, you have a purpose, you have a task. Perhaps you feel him calling you as well. Maybe God has placed a call on your life to serve him in a different way or with a different person, or, or I'm not sure what it might be, but. Maybe God has been speaking to you. Would you answer yes? I understand he's got a call on my life and I'm going to answer and go where he wants me to go. Maybe you don't know Jesus as your savior, but you're very, very intrigued by him. Maybe you're very, very amazed by him. Maybe he's been showing up in your life a lot. Maybe he's been tugging at your heartstrings a lot. And maybe you've been thinking, you know, the, the things that the folks who follow Jesus have in their life, the peace, the, the comfort, the joy, I'd like to have that as well. Maybe there's something missing that you'd like to have. I can tell you what's missing. It's Jesus. It's a relationship with him on a daily basis. He wants to come into your heart and he wants to dwell within you and he wants to, you to be his child. And you can have all of that simply by giving your heart to him today. So I would invite you as we have our invitation time to come forward. This is your opportunity to stand up or to jump in like Peter did uh, to be all in for him if you'll simply step forward. So I want to invite you to come. We're going to stand and we'll sing. And if you come, I won't embarrass you, I promise. We can pray together. If you come and you have questions, I've got folks who can sit down with you and try to answer those. Um, this is your opportunity to make a response. Those of you who are watching online, I'd love for you to make a choice for Jesus as well. At the end of the service, we'll put all of our information up on the screen. Give us a call or shoot us a message. We would love to talk with you also about your walk with Christ. So let this be an opportunity. If you feel something tugging on your heart, it's not my words. That's the Holy Spirit. So please don't deny him. We're going to stand and we'll sing together. And as we do so, I'm praying that you'll come. Please, let's stand and you come. Turn to number 333, His Way With Thee.
Would you live for Jesus and be always pure and good? Would you walk with Him within the narrow road? Would you have Him bear your burden, carry all your load? Let Him have His way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see. Was best for him to have his way with thee. Would you have him make you free and follow at his call? Would you know the peace that comes by giving all? Would you have him save you so that you need never fall? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you want to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see. T'was best for him to have his way with thee. Would you in his kingdom find a place of constant rest? Would you prove him true in providential test? Would you in his service for reward your best? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see. T'was best for him to have his way with thee. I want to invite our deacons to come forward and to wait upon us because today we get to celebrate together around the Lord's table. Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, calls us to jump all in for him, to, to give ourselves completely, to have an ongoing friendship with you. The resurrected Jesus, think about it this way, he wants to have breakfast with you. I love that moment of them on the shore with the campfire. Jesus says, come on over, bring some of your fish. I got some stuff already ready for you. I want to spend this time with you. Jesus loves you like that. He wants to have a connection with you like that because he loves you. And he loves you in spite of failures. And he loves you in spite of who you are. And he loves you in spite of all of that stuff um, he wants to spend time with you. He wants to spend time with you because he loves you, and he wants to spend time with you because he has a mission for you. There is a purpose. There's a ministry that God has placed that only you can fulfill. Maybe it's your people. There's somebody in your life that you're the one to tell them about Jesus. You're the one to be the, the hands and the feet of Jesus and to share the words of Jesus and to share the love of Jesus. I'm not sure what that ministry is, but he's got something just for you. So today as we sit down for, it still could be considered breakfast with Jesus. Could you allow this to be a time when you spend moments with him? Ask yourself, what is it that you would have me to do? What is it that you would have me to be? See, the scriptures tell us when we take this meal, anybody can share with it who's given their heart to Jesus. You don't have to be a member of our church. This is Jesus' meal, not ours. But you do, we ask, be a person who has given your heart to Jesus. Scripture tells us everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's what's required. We ask that you be a person who's given your heart to Jesus and that you've shown that in some public manner. If that's the case, then we invite you to share in this breakfast with Jesus. No campfire today, but still an amazing moment. An amazing feeling that all together we could be here and share this meal Jesus said, this meal is a reminder. It's a reminder of what I did for you. It's a reminder of my love for you. So as you take it, would you remember Jesus and share this breakfast with him? 
We're going to stand or have our deacons come and wait upon us. We'll pass the bread first. Everybody hold it if you would. And then when we've blessed it, then we'll partake all together. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, gathered with his guys. And he took the Passover meal, which was a real important meal, and he made it into something really special. He made it special because he said, whenever you take this meal from now on, it's not going to be the Passover. It's going to be the Lord's Supper. It's going to be something that I want you to remember. Remember what I did on the cross. Just hours away, he said, remember, don't forget. And we're commanded to do the same. Remember what Jesus did for you on the cross. He gathered with his guys, and he took the bread, and he broke it, and, and they blessed it. We're going to ask Nate if you would bless our bread tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather this morning to 
take this uh, symbol of the sacrifice that you made for us. Um, let us remember that this isn't the end, that the death on the cross wasn't the end for you, and our acceptance of that gift is not the end for us. Help us to remember the sacrifice daily, not just today. And help us to be bold and confident and use the gift that you gave us to do what you'll have us do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. As the deacons pass the cup amongst us, we're not going to sing or anything. This is an opportunity for you to spend some moments with, with Jesus. As you think about hanging around with somebody at the campfire, what a sweet thing that is. Could this be a little bit like that? Could you spend some moment in quiet prayer asking, thanking him? for what he did, remembering what he did for us, and then reflecting on what you will do in response. Spend these moments with Jesus. May the Lord bless you as we share.
in the way in the same way in their meal of remembrance that Jesus gave to us as a way to connect with him he took the cup and he blessed it we're going to ask Kurt if he would ask our blessing for the cup our father yes our very infinitely wise father we come to thank you today so much for your son and the blood he shed for our sins, which this cup represents. Let us all reflect now as we take this in remembrance of the blood that was spilled for our sins and the price that was paid for us. And let us appreciate the opportunity that we have and let us serve you and worship you in all that we do. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever we eat the bread or drink the cup, we proclaim his death, his lordship, his kingship, his kingdom, until he comes. Let's sing together a hymn, and then we will um, do our closing announcements. We're going to sing the family of God, which is number 282. We stand. It's a wonderful day to worship and share in the Lord's Supper together. On the back page of your bulletin is a whole bunch of announcements, so I'm not going to hit on all of them. I hope you'll take it home and keep it with you. But there are some things you need to sign up for. We already have had some folks sign up for um, camp. That's kids going into second through sixth grade in the fall. They can go to our kids' camp with us, and papers are on the ministry's table. Um, there are forms for Vacation Bible School if you, Bible school if you want to sign up. Um, and the, the website, you can also sign up on the website now. It's, it's up and running, thanks to Pastor Scott. So we appreciate that. Um, but there's other stuff from our Vacation Bible School, some needs for volunteers and some other stuff if you want to donate. Um, that would be great. Um, we do have some information about a baby shower on May the 5th from Mattathea and Roberts. So we're excited about that. Um, some folks had asked me about registry, and so I put a little paper back on the ministry's table if that's something that you're interested in. Just pick up the paper. I think it's yellow um, and take it with you. They're not sure if it's a boy or a girl, so that's why I made the pa paper yellow. <laughs> um, also, the ladies on Thursday were asking about the um, spring tea at High Prairie Church, and we just got information about that, but we needed to go quickly. So so if you, um, all ladies are invited to a spring tea April the 18th at 1 o'clock at High Prairie um, Church in Leavenworth. But I need you to sign up because they need us to RSVP. So there's a sign-up sheet, and we need to know by the 15th if you're able to attend that. Also, we are going to lunch. All retired folks are invited to go with us on this Tuesday um, to Rodeo in a Mexican restaurant in um, uh, baser, but I do also need you to sign up for that as well, and there's a sign-up sheet on the ministry's table. So read through this, and um, hopefully you'll find something that um, you can join us for. There's Bible studies in the evenings throughout the week, um, and just join us, and we'd be glad to have you. It's been a good day to be in the Lord's house, amen? amen. I didn't tell you during prayer time, but... Uh, um, Greg is back there. I already had surgery this week, and she's doing okay, I trust, but um, say some extra prayers for her, if you would, as she has a little bit of a tough recovery ahead of her, so say some extra prayers for Artie, if you would, too. I'm so grateful for you guys. You, um, well, you take care of each other. I see you 
bless one another and encourage one another. And it's been a tough week for, for many and tough weeks ahead for many. And you just love on each other. And I'm so grateful for the way that you do that. I also see you taking care of other folks that aren't in this room. And you bless a lot of people in your school and in your community and in your workplace. You all, I think, go out into the world and share Jesus with him with others and that is what we do that is who we are but thank you for that ministry let's say a prayer as we go out to minister father thank you for these sweet folks they do love you and we thank you that we can remember jesus now i pray that as we go out of this place that we might continue to remember him not just with our thoughts but with our words and our actions that we might share what jesus said and that we might share what jesus did with all the folks that we encounter. Use these sweet folks and let them be a blessing to others. And I thank you for this family of God. Bless each one, protect them, watch over them, keep them, and use them real good until we meet together again. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen.